Hello there, Gracious Gang. It's Mike Creevy from TheGraciousGuest.org and The Gracious Guest Show here with you for another chapter of the Gospel of Mark as we continue on through our Gospel series. We're moving on now to Mark chapter 4. And there's some particularly special, I think, and, and insightful reflections today from our uh, Catholic Commentary on Sacred Scripture, which we're using to help guide us through this study as well. So let's go ahead. If you haven't subscribed, also please do that, like this, and share this far and wide with someone who, who could use the gospel today, who needs the gospel today. I think we all do, right? So let's go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Again he began to teach beside the sea. And a very large crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he taught them many things in parables. And in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. And the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it had not much soil, and immediately it sprang up, since it had no depth. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seed fell into good soil, and brought forth grain growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, those who were about him with the twelve asked him concerning the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see but not perceive and may indeed hear but not understand, lest they should turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones along the path. Where the word is sown, when they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word which is sown in them. And these in like manner are the ones sown upon rocky ground, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy, and then have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then, when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the delight in riches and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown upon the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put? under a bushel, or under a bed, and not on a stand? For there is nothing hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, Take heed what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get and still more will be given you. For to him who has will more be given, and from him who has not even what he has will be taken away. And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed upon the ground, and then should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He knows not how. The earth produces of itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear, but when the grain is ripe, at once he puts it in the sickle because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? 
It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples he explained everything. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them just as he was in the boat, and other boats were with him. And a great storm of wind arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we perish? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with awe and said to one another, Who then is this who even wind and sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now we turn to our Catholic Commentary and Sacred Scripture. There's actually two selections here today which are really, I think, special. So this is from page 93 in the Reflection and Application portion. It says, A distinctive characteristic of Jesus' teachings is their inescapable demand for personal engagement. Jesus speaks in such a way that you cannot get it simply by hearing homilies. Listening to recorded talks, studying works of theology, or even reading biblical commentaries. The only way to attain full understanding is by coming to Jesus personally and asking him to reveal the meaning. Even today, Jesus welcomes any disciple who comes to him in prayer and says, Lord, explain the parable, or explain the meaning of this scripture passage that seems obscure to me. As saints of every stripe, educated and, and uneducated, have attested over the ages, the Lord will reveal profound mysteries to hearts that approach him in humble faith. Very true and very, very important. And I want to conclude now uh, also on page 97, this other reading, this is really cool. This is from the Living Tradition section, little insets like this that are uh, super helpful, usually from saints. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is from St. Augustine, listen to this, called Christ Asleep in Us. When you are insulted, that is the wind. When you are angry, that is the waves. So when the winds blow and the waves surge... The boat is in danger. Your heart is in jeopardy. Your heart is tossed to and fro. On being insulted, you long to retaliate. But revenge brings another kind of misfortune, shipwreck. Why? Because Christ is asleep in you. What do I mean? I mean you have forgotten Christ. Rouse him then. Remember Christ. Let Christ awake within you. Give heed to him. Who is this that even the winds and sea obey him? Wow, <clears throat> that's pretty awesome. And we're going to leave it there for now. We pick up uh, next time with Matthew chapter 5. And I want to conclude with Our Lady of Chestahova, as always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Mother of Chestahova, thou art full of grace, goodness, and mercy. I consecrate to thee all my thoughts, words, and actions, my soul and body. I beseech thy blessings and especially prayers for my salvation. Today I consecrate myself to thee, good Mother, totally, with body and soul, amid joy and sufferings, to obtain for myself and others thy blessings on this earth and eternal life in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Take care.